Hello everyone and uh, welcome to our panel today where we are going to talk about how technical trends are impacting e-gaming business models. I'm Mario Chamorro, I'm manager at uh, MDF Partners. It's a consultancy firm. Uh, we advise uh, regulators and operators, both uh, B2C and B2C, and we, uh, we work uh, purely in the gaming sector. So today we are going to talk about uh, technology and gambling and how technology impacts uh, gambling. I think it is uh, very clear the relationship between uh, technology and, and gambling. And in fact, I can see about a lot of examples where technology has uh, disrupted or has transformed the gambling industry. For example, we can think uh, at a product level in the last years, we have seen the rise of uh, live casino games uh, that are based in live streaming. And this has been possible thanks to the implementation and, and an improvement of uh, global internet connection and also of the reduction of, uh, of latency. So here, technology has been key. Also, at the customer level, we have seen a radical change in the last years when we have moved from a world that was um, purely des desktop based to the current world that it's uh, mobile first and in a lot of cases is mobile only. So again, we are in a situation where technology disrupt disrupted the whole industry. This happens also in, in aspects like uh, marketing or even regulation and responsible gaming. Probably responsible gaming is one of the biggest trends right now for the gaming industry. And uh, technology is also going to be key for responsible gaming. For example, in order to define uh, responsible gaming policies, in order to measure the effectiveness of such policies and all that. So um, I think there are many more examples of uh, how technology is affecting and is transforming uh, the gambling industry. But uh, it seems clear that technology is probably the highest conditionant for the gambling industry. So moving directly to the discussion, we have with us uh, today three executives with a lot of experience in three different industries. We have first uh, Chris uh, Straightwash. He is the vice president of business development at uh, Nanocosmos. We also have with us uh, Marius Galdikas. He is the CEO at uh, ConnectPay. And last, we have also Peter Eckmark. He is the CEO at uh, Internet Vikings. Welcome, all of you. So to start the discussion, um, I have one uh, general question for, for you. It's um, what do you think the main trends um, at a global level are right now at a technical level? And how can they affect the gambling industry? We're going to start, uh, Peter, with you. Well, from a technical point of view, I think one of the strongest trends are uh, cloud hosting. Uh, looking back 2001, when MGA, the Malta Gaming Authority, actually launched their first uh, online license, we had to be in dedicated uh, centers, data centers with, with sealed servers. So that's 20 years ago. Uh, lots of things have happened since then. We are actually also now looking into the same scenarios entering the US, which is uh, obviously the hotspot at the moment, even from a technology point of view, but we will see a lot of those uh, regulatory challenges uh, popping up in that market. But cloud hosting would be my number one. To, um, to continue on that level, uh, definitely uh, cloud hosting is something uh, that uh, we initiated I would say in 2012 with the aim of uh, ultra low latency live video streaming and since 2015 um, you know we operate a complete end-to-end -end, uh, white label cloud service called nanostream cloud what are the trends that we see in the market for the iGaming market there are the couple of you know topics that that we see as very interesting and very important is number one connectivity is global connectivity is a real important uh, thing. Second thing is global reach. Uh, you know, as you pointed out, Mario, the world has become very digital. So also the people around the globe also want to have, you know, the action and the global reach, whether you're in South America or you're in Europe or wherever you are, it doesn't matter. The other thing is that you see is that, uh, you know, as the internet and as the use of the internet is the quality of service and the quality of experience. Yeah, you know, the, the, the way people looked at uh, the service in the past and how they look at it today is their, you know, expectations 
are, are growing also in the, in the likes of, you know, the Netflixes of this world who created some kind of feel for, you know, quality as such. Um, the other thing that, that the internet brings is that the internet is a very hostile environment, meaning, you know, the internet and controlling the internet and operating a service on the internet is something that for anybody is related to ultra low latency or eye gaming, you know, the, the, the success of the activity and the, um, the activity as such and, 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 and the game is really important. The, so there's the technology trends, there's the internet trends, there's the quality trends, there's the, also the trends on how people, you know, develop games or how they look at games or how they, you know, raise the level of the games, which again, utilize more CPU power, require better mobile phones and so forth. So there's an ongoing red ways uh, ongoing in there. Um, let's say, uh, you know, that, that is developing there. So in, in the end, cloud hosting today, and as Peter said very well, cloud hosting today is gonna be, you know, a difference between a good service or a great service. Yeah. Okay, let, let's, let's move now to, to payments. I think it's also one of the most critical aspects for any gaming operator. Um, it's a, an industry that is also being disrupted. Yeah, there are a lot of innovation in the payments landscape. And um, even with all the innovation that we are seeing right now, especially in terms of, uh, I don't know, but we can imagine of blockchain, crypto, or new payment methods for instant transfers globally and all that. But uh, on the other hand, a lot of operators struggle currently with basic tasks like, uh, for example, opening a new banking account in a new territory. So I'd like to know your opinion, Marius, on, on why do you think this still happens today and what can be done to improve this, uh, this experience in general for gambling companies? Sure. Uh, thanks for having me here, first of all, Mario. Um, I think it, uh, we are living in, in a situation where you know, online, online gaming is struggling with customer experience especially opening the bank accounts. Uh, and I think uh, some of the main, main reasons that I would like to list here and notify, uh, note here are, well, first of all, um, even though you know, uh, financial service should be as simple and as easy as you know, flipping a light switch, it's just, it should be like electricity, right? You do a payment and then the money moves. That is the objective of every single financial institution. However, um, we're in a situation where, um, where uh, you know, there's a lot of banks and, 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 and other financial institutions that are in the mode of de-risking and, you know, because they see risks associated with uh, uh, online uh, gaming and gambling as, as, as a risky industry. However, uh, I, I think it is, it is very important um, uh, that uh, we, we look at it not only as a basic utility, but also from a par partnership perspective, right? So what we try to do at Connect Pay is we try to make it a partnership with online gaming. Online gaming is one of our core uh, core uh, core industries that we service. And by partnership, I mean you know it ha there has to be a mutual understanding both ways of what each party needs. And um, it is essential to understand that us as a financial institution, as a regulated financial institution, right? One key thing we need to know and understand is. Uh, who is the ultimate debtor, basically, and who is the ultimate beneficiary, right? And in online gaming service, you have, you know, people uh, paying, topping up their, uh, their gaming accounts. So where uh, we have to know who, who the payee is, who's, who's the ultimate, who the ultimate player is, that is our responsibility as much as it is the gaming operators. But um, at the same time, we also understand, you know, that the financial industry is regulated and, and, and the funds are the funds of, uh, of the customer, right? So the, the online gaming uh, company needs a segregated account, a separate account to, to hold the funds that do not belong to the company yet because it's just, you know, it's basically, uh, it's just um, a top up a conversion that just happened. And now the value is stored with the gaming operator um, until, you know, the, 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 the ultimate customer uh, decides to, to pay out. So what, what this means is that because of uh, the specific of this business, right, you have complex structures in, in the gaming companies, you know, you have operators, you have uh, treasury companies, payment service providers, and so on and so forth. So what we do at Connect Pay is we get into a relationship, right? We get into a partnership with a customer and we, 
uh, talk about what is needed for us to be able to provide a good service to online gaming companies. And the companies, I think, that do not do this, that do not engage into partnerships, into conversations, uh, and that you know, assess uh, individual companies of, of uh, online gaming groups, uh, those, those companies cannot really provide uh, a proper customer experience during onboarding. So um, I think that's one of the, the, key, the key words that I, that I would mention here is you know, partnership, partnerships in, 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 in providing payments to online gaming. Another thing that you mentioned, right, which is which is crypto, uh, is it is it is it gaining traction? Does it work and so on and so forth? So I think it's 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 um, uh, we 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 do hear from our customers, right, that about uh, up to seven percent of of volume of our traffic uh, can be can be done uh, in crypto. However, it is essential to understand that there are so many cryptocurrencies out there, and none of them are really usable for the end consumer, right? So there is a huge risk for the gaming operator that operates, uh, you know, or, or, or provides uh, uh, payments in crypto or accepts payments in crypto to get stuck basically with the crypto because at the end of the day, uh, you will need to, you know, uh, convert it to fiat uh, and, and, and you might face issues as a business, right? Uh, engaging the banks and whatnot, trying to, uh, to, to substantiate the funds or the fiat that, that was received by converting it from crypto. So I think even though it's gaining traction, it is not uh, being widely accepted just like anywhere else. I don't think gaming industry will, will, will be any different. So um, that also the inherent properties of crypto, right? Like the inherent uh, um, anonymity of it, it raises questions about, and you mentioned Mario, responsible gaming, right? Affordability. And one of the things I think uh, um, that we at ConnectPay are trying to do here uh, now, uh, you know, we have the proper licensing for account information and payment initiation licenses uh, and open banking is one of the areas that we are currently utilizing to be able to tap into the information available with the banks and other financial institutions to ensure that, you know, responsible gaming can be ensured and, and to ensure that you know, affordability calculations and uh, affordability assessments for online operators can be made based on the information available uh, in other financial institutions. So I think yeah. it is very important. Okay, yeah, thank you. Let, let's, mo let's move uh, again to, to Fortin because I think it's one of the, you mentioned Peter, one uh, a very important point it related to cloud hosting. Now, everything is in the cloud now. And um, in parallel, we have one of the markets, one of the most uh, of the highest growing markets like uh, United States. But there are a lot of specific uh, technical requirements no, in the US market that uh, are very important for operators to, to comply. So what is your opinion on that? What do operators need to take into account to enter in the American market? Well, it's, it's perhaps the biggest uh, opportunity and challenge the AI gaming industry has faced for a very long time. The US has been closed and now we have 16 states that are open for, for gaming and eight which are uh, around the corner more or less. And this has gone really fast since that market has been closed for a very long time. But I would say from, from an operational requirement point of view and technical point of view, we are facing uh, a, a, a variety, a big variety of different challenges, geofencing being one of them. Uh, today, most of uh, our gaming activities are, are obviously being held via mobile devices. And one state uh, will be, had to be considered a country. So no cross state uh, transfers are to be made available in the foreseeable future, which imposes a lot of restrictions. Cloud hosting obviously is meant to be available for everyone everywhere, but this is something that has to be then catered for one state uh, specifically. And also you have different tiers of, of license requirements. You have the vendor, you have the supplier and operator uh, license requirement, generally speaking for all the states. And we as a hosting service provider um, need to go for the supplier license uh, if not the operator uh, just to provide the hosting services as that is being considered a part of providing uh, i gaming services uh, this is a very cumbersome and lengthy process uh, i would say generally speaking six to 12 months to get such a license uh, that's also why there are very few if any so far 
um, providers that are dedicated uh, solely to the US market. We are one of them. Uh, we are currently active in West Virginia and Michigan, but obviously opening up in on all the states. And, and that solely comes down to the license requirements. But it's an interesting challenge. And uh, like I said, initially here, we are facing some of the previous experiences that we had here in Malta uh, 20 years ago with, with requirements of sealed services and, and dedicated data centers, et cetera. But very exciting times, I would say, and I'm, I'm actually very much looking forward to this opportunity and to see how the industry develops with this new, perhaps biggest market we have ever entered. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Let's move back again also to, to live streaming because you mentioned, Chris, uh, some words on, on live streaming and you have a lot of, a lot of experience working in, in the live streaming industry. So what do you think are the key factors for companies working with live streaming to offer a competitive product? Well, that, that's a very, very good uh, question. Um, the, the, the key thing that we very early on <clears throat> have identified and, and have chosen for is to go for, you know, the customer, meaning, you know, technology is not leading. What is the use case? So, so what, what's being required for that and, and the quality of experience that belongs to that. So when you look at your business and whether it's iGaming or, or other ultra low latency live streaming business, you look at what what do my customers need what do the players need and 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 you know on which devices are that and what we learned uh, based from our experiences is that we have built a complete suite um, of you know tools monitoring a cloud in infrastructure a player analytics all of that together to be able to have a full end to end control over the whole quality of service. And the end-to-end -end control means from the studio or from the land-based casino all the way to the player. So if today in today's world you want to look at you know, these type of services in the iGaming industry, then you know what Peter is saying about you know, the regulations that are required in you know, specific areas of the world and so forth, and that combined with being able to control the end-to-end -end experience is something that we see as a necessity to be able to, to run a successful service, you know, anywhere in the world. Uh, but again, uh, most of the people look at it, you know, fragmented in bit, bits and pieces, but this, you know, this industry and this, the, the, the service that is being delivered is, is something that is combined. It's, it's, it's one piece that needs to be controlled. So that's you know how we look at it and how we look at it from you know from the table till the player and that is what where we deliver the service. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we are running out of time, but we have time for one last uh, one last general question for all of you. It's we have talked about uh, different trends, no, especially like uh, streaming, cloud hosting, and, and payments, and how these. Uh, these segments are being transformed right now and how they will transform the gaming industry. But uh, based on your experience, what do you think the main challenges, what are the main challenges that operators are facing to take full advantage of, of that? We can start uh, with you, Marius, if you want. Uh, yeah, sure. So I think uh, the main challenge right now is the complexity and ever evolving uh, compliance environment. Peter here and Chris, you know, everybody's mentioning about uh, talking about certain capabilities that technology enables to uh, uh, to to resolve or address uh, compliance issues. So I think the biggest the, big, the biggest challenge is the ever evolving environment and and the, the differences in in different countries and differences even between the states and the United States. So I think uh, the challenge is, is the changing environment uh, to which you know technology can only provide data. Um, and, 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 and technological solutions, but the decisions need to be made uh, by the customers themselves, by the gaming operators. I would say the changing environment is the biggest thing, biggest challenge. I, I agree. I think that compliance would be my, my number one challenge. It's, it's a very complex balance to sort of have a focus on customer first, responsible gambling, 
um, mobile handsets, the globalization, meaning that we're going for cloud and local regulations, because most of the regulations honestly are politically driven or tax driven, of course, and the implications and impediments for the user are, are always very cumbersome for the operator to, to be compliant with. So they have to work together and work with the regulators in order to get reasonable requirements, which are then globalized uh, in, in the best of ways, because at the end of the day, we all want the customer and responsible gambling. From our point of view, I think technology is by no means leading anymore, meaning that that is, that is not the issue. You know, if you look at what technology wise capable of what can be done, I would say a lot is uh, possible, but I believe for the operators and everybody, the key thing is the holistic view of the whole landscape is that, you know, you, you can't look anymore at bits and pieces and try to puzzle things together. You need at a holistic point of view and, you know, Marius from a payment point of view, from a regulatory point of view, from a delivery point of view. So the holistic point of view um, is where we believe is, is you know, the biggest gain. Uh, and that's where, you know, your company, Mario, that you're part of, you know, has an important role to, you know, provide holistic blueprints for customers to comply to what we stand for. Yeah, for sure. I, I totally agree. That's very, very important. Yeah. I think we have time for one last, uh, last question. And uh, we can talk a little bit about uh, regulation. You mentioned, Peter, that regulation is for sure one of the most important aspects to, to consider. Mm, from your point of view, mm, how do you think is the relationship between regulation and, and hosting? Is uh, regulation is the one that adapt, adapts to, to hosting, not only hosting in general, to, to the technical trends, or is it the contrary? What do you think? I would say it's the contrary. Like Chris said, the technology is no longer uh, driving sort of the development. It's more a regulatory um, uh, framework that we have to adapt to. For obvious reasons, cloud hosting would be the preference of everyone involved because it makes it easier. You have backups, you have safety, you, you have the availability, but that is something we cannot use for, for, for the, the restrictions of the regulatory uh, framework that we are facing. Also, some of the regulated markets uh, need to have local hosting, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the, the challenge, of course, is to balance um, the regulations and the customer needs. Um, that is by far a very complex operation. OK, perfect. Well, um, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for your time. It's been a pleasure talking with you today. Um, I think we've heard very interesting uh, opinions on, on the different topics. And it's going to be interesting to see how technology shapes the industry in the coming, in the coming years. So many, many thanks for your time and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.